My name is Annie Meech Sumner, for those of you that I have not introduced myself to, and I have the pleasure of hosting this webinar and spending the next hour with our celebrated watercolor artist, urban sketcher, teacher, and author, who is widely recognized for her vibrant urban scenes and landscapes. Sherry, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. Before Annie. I hand the webinar over to you, I'd love to share a little bit with our audience about our program and the workshops that you have with us coming up this February in Tucson, Arizona. Sorry, January, I should say, in Tucson, Arizona, as well as the following fall um, in September in Bar Harbor, Maine. Um, Sherry will be with us in Tucson January 20th to the 24th. She's also going to be with us the 27th to the 31st. So she'll be there for two weeks, two separate workshops. And then she's going to come back to the States down to Bar Harbor, just south of her, um, September 29th to October 3rd. With her workshop in Tonka Verde Guest Ranch, this historic campus is the oldest dude ranch in the state, home to 200 horses and a talented staff ready to help you make the most of your getaway with us with the beautiful backdrop of the Rincon Mountains and the Saguaro National Park at your back door, this location provides endless opportunities for inspiration and exploration. While you're staying with us, you'll, be, you'll enjoy our comfortable accommodations and have every meal prepared for you. Another opportunity um, and unique experience with Sherry in, is in Bar Harbor, Maine in the fall. You can take in the breathtaking beauty of coastal landscapes, everyday Bar Harbor, everyday harbor scenes, and Acadia National Park, of course. The Atlantic Oceanside Resort, where we are staying, offers views of the Atlantic Ocean, large, light-filled studios, and delicious, fresh meals, so you can focus on what you came for, immersing yourself in your art with the help of your talented instructor, Sherry Blaukoff. We hope you will join us there, and with this, I will hand it off to you, Sherry. Thank you, Annie. Well, I just want to say um, welcome to everybody who's here. Uh, I recognized a lot of names, so it makes me really happy. A lot of you have been um, on in-person workshops with me, and so you kind of know what the workshop experience is like, but there might also be people who, who don't know me or who haven't taken uh, my in-person workshops. And so I guess this webinar is really you know, if you've taken online workshops with me um, on my own website, but you've never done the in-person workshop, this is really what this is about to kind of explain to you the difference between what it um, what it's like being in person with um, with an instructor and with a group of students and just having a full week to just focus on your sketchbook. So um, let me share my screen and I will um, show you. Uh, my sketches. So can you can you see that, Annie? Okay. Yes, I can. It's gorgeous. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, I great. Love it. So um, first, I, I kind of want to go through the kind of things that we sketch in Tucson. So when I first went to Tucson um, three years ago, and I went to the Tonka Verde Ranch, and I got there, and I, you know, being from from Montreal where I left winter and everything was really gray. And I got to the desert and I thought, how am I gonna paint this? I mean, this was something that was so new to me, um, the, the, uh, the saguaro and the prickly pear and just all that beautiful, subtle uh, color. So um, one of the things that we do that we start off doing is just kind of an analysis of color and saying, you know, how do we mix these colors? Because I'm used to either a very vibrant uh, summer palette, which is what we have in Montreal, or a very gray palette in winter. And this was something that was completely different. So we do spend a lot of time kind of looking at all the textures of the desert and uh, the distant mountains and the colors of well, it is the colors of winter in the desert. So things aren't flowering, but they're still really beautiful. So this was um, one of the pages from my sketchbook where we just said, how do we, how do we make sense of this? Um, and uh, another place that we love to sketch, and the reason that I love it there so much, 
And this is the great thing about this type of experience is we are together for breakfast and lunch and dinner, and we spend the rest of the time in between sketching. So um, we, we do have a beautiful studio that we can use. It has, it has windows and big tables and great light, but we try to spend most of the time outdoors. And that's because there's just uh, so much to capture. And uh, one of the first things we do is we go up to the old homestead, which is uh, a little walk up the hill from, um, you know, from where the rooms are and where the dining hall is. And uh, I don't know, do you know, Annie, how old this old homestead is? Oh, Sherry, I knew you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> you probably should have known, but you know, there's all sorts of different tales about about this. But they say it was the original. I think someone said that this is where the um, ranch owner built this house for his for his maybe his second wife. Ah, is that maybe that's folklore? But we'll find out. Oh, but yes, this this is the old homestead, and it is one of the original buildings at the top of the ranch. Yeah, and it's the light in the morning is really beautiful. So you'll see some other sketches later of, you know, in the foreground where those little logs are, that's the campfire. And we actually go up there. There's a pancake breakfast, I think, on Thursday. Thursday, and, yes. Yeah, and, every, and what's fantastic also about being at the ranch is there's all kinds of other activities going on at the same time. So that also gives us sketching subjects. For example, people come there, a lot of people come there just to go horseback riding. So people ride up to the ranch and they park their horses. And then there's a chuck wagon with a pancake breakfast. So it's not just the old homestead that we sketch. We also sketch, um, you know, the, the, the wranglers and the people on their horses. And we sketch the horses and, and the people making the breakfast. And um, it's, just, it's just such a lively scene. So we go up there when it's quiet, but we also go up there when it's really lively. Um, and you'll see another sketch of this because this is one of my my favorite spots. The colors are amazing. Yeah, and, yeah, and um, of course, there's situated all around the ranch is um, there's a lot of kind of uh, Western paraphernalia. Again, all all new for me. This Canadian girl. So all of these all of these wagons and um, different kinds of you know horse. Um, horseshoes and all the stuff that the Wranglers have. It's all so beautiful and it's so worn. And I love uh, painting and drawing all of that beautiful worn and rusty stuff. So um, that this is another one of the things that we love to draw. It's right outside our studio and the light on the on the fabric on that wagon is uh, is really beautiful. Now, the first time I went to the ranch, I had never drawn horses. I draw my dog all the time. If you follow my blog or you follow my drawings on Instagram, you've seen my dog, Alice, plenty of dog drawings, but never a horse. And a horse is not an easy thing to draw. So I did spend a lot of time uh, the first time I was there figuring out the anatomy of the horse. And this was one of the ones that I did, I think at a pancake breakfast where I was just like, okay, the head is really hard to draw. I'll start from the backside. And um, so we did that and I do do a little lesson. I did get better and I do I do a, a little lesson on drawing horses. So um, I what just- I think is so fun about this Sherry is, you know, again, for people that aren't used to the ranch, there are about 165 geldings I believe that's how many horses there are. And, um, you know, they're, they're constantly around. And so I think that probably was surprising to you when, you know, you got there and, yeah. and saw them. And, and I think your sketches of these horses are incredible. What people don't understand is horses don't stay still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, they, they do move. I mean, they were tied up, I think, because it was the breakfast. But um, mm. and, and of course, a highlight of the day is the, the turnout. Um, where they the horses are in one corral and then they let them loose to um, for them to go eat where uh, in another area and it's kind of like a stampede so there's a spot where you stand and it's like they come barreling down uh, towards you it's very dramatic and it's very beautiful so that is something we try to do we try to go and uh, I try to go and look at that every day because that's something that I've I had never seen 
And uh, it's funny because like the young ones come kind of uh, galloping along. And then at the end, there's all the old ones that are sort of, they have to wedge themselves in between spots to get the hay, but they're really beautiful. So that was my horse drawing. And then um, I also like to fill in my sketchbook with uh, things like this. We kind of uh, uh, pushed our way in uh, and asked if we could go into the tack room because in the tack room is all the saddles and all, all the, the boots with the spurs and the ropes and all these things. So um, we did a lot of small drawings also, but I also love uh, the Wranglers. And my favorite wrangler is Joe. He's there on the right. And sometimes I, I write down what, um, what people say. So he told me he's been working here since the 70s. And um, my very best experience was when I went to sit and draw. I had, I had a, a day off in between two groups. And I went to sit um, where the, um, the corral is in the back. And Joe came over and he told me that he used to draw. In fact, he wanted to be an artist. And um, he said, do you mind if I sit and draw with you? Did you know that story, Annie? He came, he came. He no, I, and, and me. he got a ballpoint. It's point absolutely pen. wonderful. Said, yeah. And he drew with me for about um, 45 minutes. And you'll see the drawing that I did. I don't, and his drawing was very good. He drew a horse also. So Didn't you do uh, a card or something for him? Yeah. Yeah. I made it. Do you I, have that? Something. Do you have that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I took a picture. Okay. That was so sweet. So after I, I realized after that, after that, um, that week that you met him, you did, I saw you did a card thanking him and he yeah. is truly an icon on the ranch. I mean, the fact that he, you know, he still gets on a horse and rides with all the groups. It's, it's beautiful, but knowing that he's a, he, he, he sketched with you is, is really quite sweet. Well, you, you know why I thanked him? I thanked him because he came and brought me a book to read about cowboy artists. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I read, I read wow. the book while I was there and I wanted to just thank him for lending me the book. Yeah. He does leather work too. Yeah. Um, this is also right outside our studio and, uh, you know, just learning about the saguaro is really something. I mean, they're so tall and so majestic, so beautiful. And when you walk up through the desert and you learn about them and you learn uh, how long it takes for them to get their first arms, and then there's a whole cycle of life within the saguaro and how uh, birds make homes in them and then other birds come in in the homes that the first birds make and anyway they're they're really really beautiful so uh, i drew a fair bit of those um plus the, the little color and the texture it. sherry yeah. is incredible on yeah. these um and I, I you know just to sort of interrupt you what really, really find in, incredible and, and really warming about this whole thing is that when you have students that join you on these workshops, a lot of them are, a lot of, you know, a few of them are local from the area. And over the years, I feel like you have gained so much insight of, yeah, about absolutely. the names yeah of the, the cacti and, and, and all this information that I, I find it. So it, it's so touching to hear your stories that you tell um, of your experiences here. So thank you for that. Well, you know, because we come every year, uh, not only do I get to know the Wranglers, but there's also families that come back year after year to go riding. So there's many families that I, there, you know, there's one woman who spends every minute of her vacation riding horses. I thought she worked there, actually, until I saw her eating in the dining room. And I said, oh, you know, you're taking a break from work. She goes, I'm not, I'm, this is my holiday. I thought she worked there because she was yeah. on the horses all the time. It was great. Um, okay, so here I, I started putting um, color, a little bit of color, and this is the breakfast ride. So we go up there and um, I don't usually eat pancakes because I'm too busy drawing. I, I just uh, I just love that. And I, I think also what um, part of the experience for students is that when you're with a group and you're with an instructor and you're in a situation where there's a lot of movement and a lot of people, um, people are, are afraid to draw. But I think when you're in a group um, and you just immersed in it, you lose that fear because you're, first of all, with practice, when you're drawing five days in a row and you're doing nothing but, um, of course, you strengthen your skills. And um, I think when you're surrounded by, by other people who are drawing, it does give you the confidence uh, to, uh, to be able to draw in public.
And that's one thing that I find um, that is really helpful for students is overcoming the fear of drawing in public. That, that's a real thing. I, I mean, that, that was a real thing for me too when I first started drawing. So I think um, that that's the difference between, let's say, taking an online workshop and taking an in-person workshop. It gives you confidence to be in, in a real surroundings and be outdoors and just uh, losing the fear of putting something down on paper. You do a really wonderful job of that, Sherry, especially at the end of the day with the throwdowns. Um, everyone makes each other feel so comfortable um, from day yeah. one. Um, and yeah. so you've always created such a supportive group. Um, and you can really see that at the end of each day when you do sort of, and I wouldn't even say it was a critique. I think you do more of like, a, you know, it's almost like just sort of a how would you how would you describe well I, I, you know I always tell students um I don't do a public critique because I I go around while I do I always do a demo every day and then I spend the rest of the day just circulating and helping people as they're working and um so people I've already done kind of my critique privately with each student and help them get through their sketch um, or their sketches that they're working on that day. But the throwdown at the end of the day is for people to see what other people have done. And sometimes uh, what I like is when they talk about their own experience, the difficulties they had and how they resolved them. And um, it's always so amazing to see, you know, 15 or 12 people and how we all looked at the same thing and how we all drew something uh, completely different, slightly different. Uh, you know, everybody has their own perception. So... Uh, yeah, I, I, I like that part a lot, mm -hmm. um, especially because at the end of the day, I'm all talked out. So I get everybody to talk about their own work, which is really nice. Um, this was one that I did uh, from my room and our rooms are really beautiful and many, many of them face out um, at these different desert scenes, uh, whether they're, you know, we are situated in the ranch right next to Saguaro National Park. So if you like to hike, it's also a great place. A lot of students go hiking. Uh, there are a lot of trails right on the ranch um, grounds. So you can take a walk before or after uh, class. Um, and then there's also, you can, we're only about what, half a mile from the park entrance. So people go for a hike um, in the, right in the park. It's, uh, it's quite incredible, really, really beautiful. So this is just a view from my room. Um, on kind of an overcast day. I think it might've even been raining, but I just wanted to capture uh, those colors and textures of the desert. Sometimes I feel like the colors pop even more after a rain. Don't you agree, Sharon? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was really beautiful. Yeah, it was really beautiful that day. Um, also the skies are very dramatic. Um, this is uh, San Javier del Bac. So we do do some field trips. We do get out of the, we, we leave the ranch. And um, last year we went to San Javier del Bac, which they call the white dove of the desert. It's this really beautiful um, uh, mission, not too far, just a little bit south of Tucson. So not a very long drive. Um, and it was the most welcoming place. Uh, we drew um, outside. Uh, you know, we looked at it from a distance and then we went in where those people are walking in and people drew right inside uh, the church and they drew right along the edge. You'll see some of my photos after, but it's just, um, I think one of the favorite experiences last year that we had, people just, just loved it. Um, and on that day, we also, I wanted people to record in their sketchbooks um, some things that were personal to them. So some people, like I said, went into the church. Some people drew architectural details. You know, after drawing the full building, uh, we also drew details. And the the thing that was, um, as I mentioned, I love dogs. So to me, my personal experience that I wanted to record is um, this is on reservation land and there are many strays and uh, they're, they're very friendly and they're very well fed and they just hung out with us. And it was so amazing. They came and they just sat. So um, my personal page was the, the strays of, uh, of San Javier, which I thought they were just fantastic. So I did that with a water with a water soluble pen. Um, another really beautiful area is the wash. That is my 
um, one of my favorite areas. So we take one of the trails and this is, uh, depending on, uh, I guess, the rains that they've had in December and January, it can be either quite full with water and the reflection of the mountains is really gorgeous at the end of the day, or sometimes it's more of a trickle. But um, you'll see photos uh, later of my students sitting there and looking at this view and drawing this. So, you know, we do a variety of things. And that's what I wanted to emphasize is that we do, um, you know, we do the landscape. We also do a bit of architecture. We do the horses. We do people. Um, we do surrounding area with a little bit of history. There's just so much we pack into the week. Um, now, this was the horse Yoshi that I drew when I was sitting and drawing with Joe. So um, uh -huh. that horse was having a little break and it was backlit. And um, I don't know, it was just such a great experience. I mean, sometimes you look at the sketch and what comes back is the experience that you had um, when you were drawing it. And to me, it was just hearing about Joe's life when he was growing up. So that's what that sketch means to me. Um, and then this was something that I did on my own um, uh, before uh, I started teaching. I went to the, the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum and um, I drew, uh, you know, I drew some of the animals that were there and that's a really beautiful place. So I'm just showing these because, you know, sometimes people extend their trips and they go and do some of the beautiful things. There's the Air and Space Museum and the, there's this museum and there's the Botanical Gardens. So there's a lot in the area. It was all new to me and I'm just starting to discover it. Um, we also uh, take, uh, or in the past we've, taken a little uh, trip to the botanical gardens, which are really beautiful. And um, this is a day when we focus on page design. So um, uh, I like to show how I design my sketchbook pages if I'm dividing them up into different sections and how I do bigger drawings and smaller drawings and how I create those layouts. So the, the botanical gardens are a perfect place for that. And again, very welcoming to artists and just a gorgeous, gorgeous place to draw. You have a new course coming up, right? Am I, I right? do have a course that is out already that's called design ideas for your sketchbook. So it's very much this. It's, you know, how to how to make things work on a page. How do you do, how to use typography, how to use a design grid. And so um, this trip would be a perfect place to put yeah. all of that in practice. And you know, what's so interesting, Sherry, is that people, you know, you don't think you don't think of that when you're coming onto a workshop with you. You just think that each day you're going to do a demo and then work on that demo, put color on, and then be done with that for the day. But this sort of idea of the vignettes and 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 how you put them on the page and the and the font and the typo typography, like you were saying, these are all wonderful um, added bonuses to a week of workshop. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, the thing that I like to do, and I, I again, um, you know, my teaching style is not like, here, I do this demo, now you copy my demo. My yeah. teaching style is more about teaching students to see, to see mm -hmm. on their own, and so that I give them the tools to be able to sketch independently. And, um, you know, part of that is being on location, all looking at the same scene and all saying, okay, what can we extract how can we simplify this scene? And what do you want to say? It's not, you know, it's not about having the same personal vision as me. It's about having your own personal vision and how can I help you strengthen that vision of, um, of what you want to record in your sketchbook. Um, this was an, another small one that we did, and this was on the day that we were, uh, one of the first days where we were kind of just looking at the colors. And because I love color and I focus a lot on color, um, I think I used a limited palette on this, and we really looked at values, at lights and darks, and um, about how to capture some of the beautiful and subtle colors of, um, of the desert. So this was a, a favorite little one that I did, just because I think I got the values and the colors right of that day. Um, here's another one that I did up at the um, up at the old homestead, and those rocks in the foreground are the 
um, kind of the leftovers of the campfire that uh, right after the pancake breakfast. So it's always nice. Sometimes it's a little cool, I have to say, in Tucson in the winter. Um, and we start off wearing our, our little down vests in the morning and then kind of take off layers as the day goes on. So we always like having that little, little bit of sun and that campfire there in the morning. But you read, you read my mind, Sherry. I was just about to touch upon the temperature. Someone had asked about it in the chat box. Um, and you're right. We start the morning off with layers. Um, yeah. And by the time you, and especially when you're at the homestead up at the top, by the afternoon, right after lunch, I mean, people are stripping down. It is important to bring a hat. Am I right? Oh, yes. A hat, a sun hat. I, I bring uh, fingerless gloves, too. Yeah. Um, and but it can be about 60 degrees by the afternoon. It can definitely be in oh, the yeah. 50s in the morning, but it warms up by the afternoon always. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's always nice. And I prefer sketching in cooler weather. I'm, I'm not a, a fan of a really hot day to be outside. So this for me is, is ideal uh, temperature. I don't mind a little bit of cold. Um, Sherry, I have a question from someone sure. who had said, um, oh, sorry, you're about to it's get okay. into this, but someone had just asked, um, is this, um, for someone who's not as experienced uh, with, with urban sketching, would this workshop be suitable for them? Well, I always uh, tell people that it's better for me to um, have a one-on-one -on -one back and forth a little bit in email and find out um, what their experience is and maybe have them send me a few of their sketches. Okay. Um, and then what I do is I sometimes say, okay, look, in between now and January or February, here's what I'd like you to do if you take the workshop. I'd like you to you know, go out. I'd like you to draw from life. I'd like you to even like I do, sit in, sit in your car and just um, you know, get used to being outside because I think it's a hard transition if you're used to always sketching from photos to mm -hmm. suddenly be in a 360 environment and not know what to do. So um, I have lots of ideas and I think it makes people more comfortable if I have a look at what their work is and um, give them some ideas and tell them, you know, here's how you're going to do in this. So that, you know, feel feel free, Annie, to you know, send people my way. Absolutely. And you're wonderful about communicating. You get right back all the time. So um, absolutely. If anyone does want to reach out, if they're not sure if they're, you know, it's suitable for them, reach out to Sherry. She's incredibly warm, kind, responsive to all sorts of emails. So um, I speak from experience. I will. Thanks, Annie. Okay, so a little bit about um, the student experience. Um, yeah, Annie showed some pictures, but I mean, I just think that, uh, you know, getting up early and taking a walk and seeing these kind of landscapes, it looks like this both in the morning and in the evening. So it's just a stunning, stunning place with the distant mountains. And, um, you know, you see wildlife. I saw my first um, roadrunner and uh, what are those strange looking? Uh, javelinas. Javelinas, javelinas. I saw javelinas one morning we woke up. So what were you gonna say? What were you gonna describe them as strange looking what? Sorry, I shouldn't have stopped you. Um, well, they are strange looking creatures cause they're kind of round, but if you look at them uh, straight on, they, they're, they're like flattened. <laughs> so they look, they look sort of like pigs that have been squished. Correct. Um, exactly. And um, uh, one morning uh, I opened the curtains in my room and there were like 20 of them outside the room just snuffling around in the vegetation. Um, anyway, so there's all kinds of all kinds of things that I had never seen before. I also like identifying all the different um, uh, cacti and plants like there's like 13 kinds of choya, including jumping choya, which um, uh, you know, the, the little thorns uh, kind of get stuck on your pants if you walk too close to them. And there's okatia, which, is, which are those tall ones. Anyway, they're all, all beautiful to draw. Um, and this is, this is from a hike. You know, I just walked up a little bit up past the ranch and uh, it's just so beautiful looking down. And, and the plant in the front, uh, the palo, palo verde, is another interesting plant because that plant and the mesquite, they support the saguaro as they're growing, they hold them up 
as they're growing. That's another thing that I learned. And um, so, so that ecosystem, that desert ecosystem is so interesting, not just to draw, but also to learn about. Um, and here's my group uh, all huddled uh, in a little bit of shade drawing uh, at the cookout one morning. And this is, these are the wranglers and they're so funny because, you know, they pretend that uh, they don't see you when you're drawing, but then they come over and they all wanted to see what I drew. So <laughs> I had, I had put them in, in a drawing and uh, they wanted to see that. And they love when you draw the horses too. Um, and then on, is it Wednesday night? We have our cookout. I mean, we don't go hungry. Let's just say in Tucson, um, the food is fantastic. Uh, it's very plentiful. It's very healthy. And uh, it's it's buffet style, but there's so many choices for vegetarians and meat eaters. And the cookout is really, uh, uh, really fun. We go up there and there's cowboy music and uh, they have campfires and there's s'mores on the campfires. And it's really just nice to have a chance to sit with people at the end of the day and get to know them. And that's part of the experience that I like about, um, about this uh, particular location is that I, I really get to, to talk to people. So that and that's the nice thing about it, Sherry, the meals are so interactive with the students. Um, you know, you all, at, like many of our other workshops at other locations, we do sometimes have other workshops going on at the same time, whether it's quilting or a writing class or um, urban sketching or watercolor. Um, so you really have the opportunity to meet other people and sort of cross pollinate when you're not in the workshop, which is really wonderful and a chance for um, everyone to get together. Um, and and this yeah. this specific night, the Wednesday night, is the cowboy cookout, and um, it's a lot of fun. It's a chance for everyone to get bundled up and get together. And there's music playing, um, fairy lights, and um, you know they're also really good about getting people around on the ranch. If you're not super mobile. Um, they have they have golf carts available for you that will transport you to and from the different areas. For instance, up to the homestead, Sherry, um, we're able to transport people who aren't super mobile um, but, but want to participate in your workshop. Yeah, exactly. It, it is very easy to get around. And we appreciate those carts because we can just put all our painting stuff on them. Even if we want to walk, we dump our painting stuff on the cart and they bring it all up for us. Sherry, so one of our guests are asking, have you ever seen a snake or a scorpion while you've been in Tucson? Uh, Be honest. No, I, I have not. <laughs> I'm happy to say. I have not seen. It's actually too cold for snakes. They're all hibernating in January. Okay. So we'll be proud to say that there are no snakes. Um, but uh, I have seen one scorpion and that's, it was probably about this big. Okay. No, I have seen nothing, uh, nothing dangerous. There is a sign that says, you know, be careful in one of the places we paint that it's there, there, there could be snakes there, but all we've ever seen is beautiful birds. Cause I think you're right. It's January yeah. and they're hibernating. So we do see a lot of incredible birds. There are some feeders in that location. And so if you're a bird watcher, it's a fantastic place for, for watching the birds. Sherry, um, another student is asking um, if we provide folding chairs. Um, and we don't provide folding chairs for everyone, but we have extras on hand. And if people are traveling, um, just to reach out to us and let us know that you're not bringing one, that's fine. I know a lot of people do purchase those small little stools and they prefer those, but we have a lot of folding chairs on location as well. Um, so if, if it is something that is stopping you from coming because you don't know what to pack or you don't know how to pack a folding chair, don't let that stop you. We'll absolutely provide one for you. Yeah. And I, and I have a video also that sort of shows you how to do your setup if you're sitting and working and painting on your lap. Um, so I have some inexpensive solutions. Not everybody wants to have an easel. So I have an inexpensive solution with a sheet of choroplast, just so people aren't, you know, have their water on the ground and leaning over their work. You want to have everything right in front of you and easily accessible. So I have lots of, lots of ideas about that too. Um, yeah, here's uh, one of my students. Again, figuring out, um, and now I think this was when the horses, this is the, the big corral that they're in. So um, they, they kind of stay 
there. They they move around a little bit, but you know, if one horse moves away, another one will come along and they kind of all look alike. Now I'm probably insulting some people who know horses really well and they say, oh no, there's different kinds of horses, but you know, for me, <laughs> another horse comes along, I'll I'll add that part, you know, the legs on that on that horse. So um and this is my friend Joe. Isn't he great? Yes. It's fantastic. Yeah. There he was. And um, he didn't stand still for us to draw him, but he let us take his picture and he was uh, pretty happy to do so. So I, I know people sketched him afterwards from their photos because he's just an icon of the place. And I hope I get to see him this year. I'm sure you'll get to see him. Another funny story about that, Sherry, is I was so busy in the, you know, taking pictures of people on horses. And I think he saw how frustrated it was. I was getting hit by a you know, cactus left and right. And I was trying to get out of the horse's way. And I think he actually, he was, he was, he was taking up the, uh, he was taking up the end. However you say that he was leading the end of the, the horse yeah. ride. He, anyway, um, he saw the frustration I was having trying to get pictures and just sort of, you know, maneuvered his horse, like with the sun behind him and a huge swallow and just set the scene perfectly for me. So, you know, he's just a wonderful, wonderful, you know, legend at the ranch. So I'm so glad that you yeah. had some time with him. And I'm looking forward to having you spend time with him this year yeah. as well. Me too. Um, this was another uh, surprise. Um, on the first day that I arrived there, the first year, uh, we got a little uh, tour um, from someone on, on a golf cart from someone who works there and she was sort of pointing out here's archery and you know here's where the cookout is and here's Paul McCartney's house and here's another saguaro and I said wait wait a second did you just say Paul McCartney's house and she said oh yeah it's it's that building over there and it turns out that was the house that Paul and Linda McCartney built um, and lived there for 20 years. I'm not sure if Linda McCartney died there, but I mean, as a Beatles fan, I was sort of like, okay, this is a story. This has to go in my sketchbook. So as soon as I got off the golf cart, I grabbed my sketchbook and I ran back there. Now you can see it in the distance. It's not like you're right in front of it. You, it's in the distance. Um, but I, when we're sitting and drawing at the wash, it really is right across. And so, I, you know, in my mind, I like to imagine that Paul McCartney is in the house while we're drawing. And, uh, yeah. you know, I might hear a little music. Um, <laughs> anyway, it, it was just brilliant story. I, I love that. That's the kind of story. Or perhaps, Sherry, we could even say that he comes in the doghouse saloon later on that night and you sit down and enjoy a cocktail with him. That would be an even exactly, better story. Exactly. You know, or shows up at the cowboy cookout with his guitar, you know, that would be pretty good too. So um, here we are at the at the mission at San Javier. And um, this is the place where we drew all those beautiful uh, cacti of different shapes. And um, we were lucky because someone from the foundation came along. You just, sometimes these things happen. They see you drawing. Someone came along and he gave us a wonderful um, unprompted uh, his little bit of history about uh, the restoration of the mission. And it's so beautiful inside. It's all carvings and beautiful paintings. And they actually brought people from Italy to restore it inside from the Sistine Chapel. So um, we learned that sometimes you're just there at the right moment. And uh, we had a wonderful little tour. Um, and this is the wash. So this was, this was the day that we were sitting and drawing and uh, you saw the drawing that I did of the rocks and the wash. And just to the left is Paul McCartney's house. So this is a place that's not too far to walk to, but again, easy to get to by, by golf cart. Um, we also do different kinds of things. You know, every day has a plan. So sometimes we work on color, composition, vignettes. And this was a day that we worked on um, values. So we worked, we did value studies and then we did um, the, uh, kind of the translation to color. So how do we adapt uh, values to color? And that building, that big old barn is is the dining hall. So um, sort of gives you an idea of what it looks like there. Um, and then of course, the, we always have the throwdown at the end of the week. So the end of the week, that's one of my favorite days when we just put everybody's work out. And then you really get to see what everybody did um, uh, for the whole week, you get to flip through their sketchbooks. And that's just the nicest thing because, you know, you don't realize how much you've done in a week, but you can get 
uh, quite a bit done. If you, you know, we, a lot of people, because we eat dinner early and let's mention there are no TVs in these rooms. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you can't absolutely. go and watch There Netflix. is Wi-Fi though, Wi-Fi, but there no are TV. lots of Wi-Fi. Yeah. But um, people, people work on their sketches at night. So they go back to the studio and they finish their sketches. Uh, and so that's really nice. So you really do have a big fat book uh, of sketches by the end and I love to look at them all and look at what and I think everybody feels so proud of their work too when people are looking at it um, so that was it for Tucson are there any more uh, questions about that Annie before I go on to the kinds of things we do in Bar Harbor Yes, hold on. There was a couple questions that I'm looking at right here. I think we answered most of them about the temperature and um, about the non-experience um, and how they get in touch with you. So that's, I think that's all we had about uh, the questions on this. Um, I think we're good. Okay, Good. So I'll just um, talk about uh, the experience in Bar Harbor. And it's very fresh in my mind because I think I just came back about two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. So we just had the most fantastic week, didn't we, Annie? Oh, yeah. it was absolutely um, wonderful. Every time working with Sherry, working with you, Sherry, each time gets better and better and better. We get to know each other. We get repeat students coming back. I mean, Mary Scanlon, you know, it's like if she doesn't come to your one of your workshops, I'm like, well, where's Mary? Yeah. Um, you know, it's sort of one of those things where we, and we get to know the students on such a personal level, which is so fun to be with you. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was a wonderful week in Bar Harbor. The weather was chilly, but warm. Um, yeah. what was and your, we have, what, we have what was studio. your takeaway from that week? Well, it, it's a different experience than when, um, you're, you know, when I teach in the summer, I mean, when I taught in Bar Harbor for the first time last year, it was the first time teaching in a, a little colder climate where it is kind of damp and maritime. So I think the students in um, this year too appreciated that uh, in the afternoon we come back and we do spend some time in the studio. So it's a different kind of experience because we sketch outside in the morning and then we come back and either work on that same sketch or, or do something else in the afternoon. And um, I like that experience, too, because it allows people to kind of uh, finish their work in a more relaxed way, uh, being in the studio and not being cold. Although I have to say nobody complained about the cold. Uh, everybody mm -hmm. came prepared, lots of layers. And it's just so beautiful. I, you know, before um, I taught with Misa and Bar Harbor, I had never been to Acadia Park and I really couldn't grasp what it was like. But I mean, we say this is this is the beauty of Bar Harbor, but really we paint all around Mount Desert Island. So it's not just in the town of Bar Harbor. We go to all the little towns in Northeast Harbor and Southwest Harbor. And, um, you know, we go down, we go right into the park. Uh, some of these you'll see are painted right right on the beach. So this was one painted right on the beach. Um, we love the town. There's a village green. And um, in the fall, it's really beautiful. There's a little gazebo, there's fountains. I was just writing about it on my blog. And I said, this spot has for an urban sketcher, everything. There's distant mountains, there's, uh, there's trees, there's a, there is a fountain, there's a clock, there's people walking by with dogs, there's parking meters, there's, you know, there's cars, there's like everything you could possibly want to put in an urban scene is in this village green. So again, like, like many locations, you could spend just one week just in the town of Bar Harbor. But we do spend um, a day there right in the town. And uh, this was one that I did last year. And I think I have another one that I did of this spot um, this year. Uh, Sherry, it's so funny. You say it so beautifully that that village has it all. You're right. I mean, it's got cars. It's got parking meters. It's got, you know, you name it. Yeah. Um, I didn't even think about you, you, um, and you've done different, um, views each year, correct? Yes. Like from yes. different, lo different views in the green, in the village green. Yeah. Yeah. And the tall trees, you know, it's, it's just really beautiful. Um, this is, this is shore path, which is just down from main street, down from the village green. Also another beautiful spot right on the water. Uh, I love drawing rocks. So, um, just a gorgeous spot. It was closed this year for 
was it a was there storm damage or they were renovating it so we didn't paint it this year but really beautiful Sherry, um, your colors are incredible um I, I know we go during an incredible peak season but the colors the greens and the oranges I know you've said nothing about your color yet but um you know it's something that I think a lot of people well that I think that's what's so beautiful about being there at that time of year um, fall is really beautiful and especially in a place like that where there's lots of trees I I love this place because I can drive from Montreal so the drive there is incredible because we go through the mountains in Quebec and then the mountains in Maine and come out and then we have both the combination of the maritime scenes plus uh, the colors and so it just makes it so beautiful so yeah we look at color a lot we look at color we look at composition um, there's a little bit of everything. Uh, this is one of my favorite spots. This is Northeast Harbor. And um, I love painting boats and reflections. So this is one um, that I did last year. Uh, the fall colors in the background, but it's just, you know, it's, I find the place so moody and so beautiful. Um, there's a, another boat that you'll see later that I did in this same place, but that's, that is one of my favorite spots too. And I think this year we had some people who were really nervous about drawing boats because boats are complex, but we really broke down the process and we did have the perfect boat. So I think I'll come to that after. Um, this was one that we did. We walked right down to Sand Beach and we painted the surf and uh, the rocks and, Another another gorgeous spot. We sat right up in the sand, and uh, this the I forget if the tide was coming in or out, but we were for, far back enough that we didn't get washed away, and it was so beautiful. Uh, this was another one down at the um, on the village green. There's all these little shops that sell all these souvenirs. So I just like doing close up, far away, um, you know, details. Just there's just beautiful details everywhere. Your talent, Sherry. Did the oh my gosh, this picture blows me away. The talent and 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 it's just unbelievable. Yeah, this is one from this year. Um, this, this is one I'll remember the experience because we were on on painting from one dock and looking at this other dock, and the tide was coming in, and um, you, you know there was a, a little bit of a story because there there was an angry fisherman who thought that we shouldn't be there, so he sort he wanted to take the hose and wash his boat, and at the same time kind of spray us away, but. Um, you know, he said, this, this, this dock is for, uh, you know, for, for boats and fishermen or something like that. But anyway, these are kind of the kind of urban experiences that sometimes happen, you know, urban sketching experiences mm -hmm. that sometimes happen. And you, you just have to laugh. I mean, I guess not everybody <laughs> appreciates art, but we just kept on sketching, right? Yeah, it was kind of funny. So that's what I remember about that. But I love all these rusty things and, uh, uh, you know, uh, lobster traps and beautiful reflections. So yeah, that, that was my favorite one from this year. Sherry, this is a gorgeous one. Can you give me an idea of how long from start to finish this took you? Uh, it was probably, that was my demo. So I would say probably uh, the drawing took about half an hour or 45 minutes. And then I painted it pretty quickly. Um, I probably painted it in about um, half an hour or 45 minutes, you know, I sort of start and stop. So sometimes I do the drawing and then students will do their drawing and then I come back and I do the painting and the students do their painting after. So I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody um, in the chat who was there with me and would remember, but, you know, usually I would say probably half an hour for the drawing and then, but I'm, a, I'm fast and I have to be fast when I'm doing demos so that I don't, so that students have time to work too. Fabulous. Yeah, I think actually I have that one right in, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right in back of me here. Oh, it's great. Yeah. One that got away. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the Village Green this year. So this year we had the backlight. We were looking into the sun and I wanted to convey uh, again the movement, people walking through the scene and how the light was coming from the left and how beautiful that autumn light was. I didn't want to hear, here's a little discussion about color. Um, when there's backlight coming through, you can't see the brightness of the trees. They're really kind of all in darkness. So I wanted to convey a warmth 
in the trees, but I, I didn't want to make them too orangey or too garish. I wanted to show uh, autumn, but not bright autumn. I had to show kind of dark autumn and um, and then the mountains in the distance. So again, that's a study in values. You know, how do you convey um, through color temperature? How do you convey uh, close and far? So I did kind of a purple green for the mountains in the distance because I wanted to show, well, that is Cadillac Mountain. That's something we can see from uh, where we are on the village green, but it, it's in the distance, so it's cooler. And then less texture. And then all the texture and all the color and all the warmth um, all the colors that um, uh, that come forward are the warm colors, and the, the purple is what recedes, and that's how you create the distance. So we do talk a lot about that, about how to how to create depth in a sketch, and um, that that again was something that I did uh, with my students on location. This is fantastic, Sherry. Um, I, it just is. It's compared to the you know this one was from this year, but the one yeah. you showed a couple slides back was from last year. But the same location, approximately yeah. the same location, yeah. and it's crazy. I mean, I didn't. I, it was a gorgeous sunny morning this year, and I forget that the one from last year it was slightly overcast. The colors were a little more vivid because it was later on in the season. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's unbelievable how you can show two totally different color palettes um, and and moods in these two images. It's it's yeah. it's simply yeah. uh, you know breathtaking, and it, it probably involves a whole lot of talent of yours that I don't know if I could ever wrap myself around. <laughs> It's just practice, Annie. It's perfection is what it is. Um, Sherry, I had a quick question back on that one of the boats. Um, someone's asking about what white pen works for you. Are you using a white pen or are you? Uh, let me just see if I can uh, go back and look at it. Sorry uh, about that. Okay, yes, no, that's one. fine. I, I, sometimes I have to look at it to see what I did. I, I used a combination of things, but I do carry a tiny tube of titanium white watercolor and I have a rigor brush, a very fine brush, and I, I don't squeeze out um, the paint on my palette. I, I dip it into, I actually stick my brush right in the tube. And if you look, you can see that, that those are actual brush marks. I have gel pens too. So maybe some of the finer lines are gel pen. Um, I use a Signo Uniball white gel pen that I find is the best, but this is definitely a white watercolor and it's in the reflections as well. Straight, cool. straight from the tube. Um, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Sure. sure. Sherry, I had another question. Um, uh, uh, someone's asking if they're, if they're traveling to one of these workshops to Tucson or to Bar Harbor with you and they're bringing their spouse and their spouse doesn't sketch, um, is there enough to do around Bar Harbor, for instance, if they're not joining you at the workshop? Uh, there is plenty to do around Bar Harbor. Bar, Bar Harbor is amazing. Uh, Acadia Park has um, a system of buses that are free and they run all summer and they will definitely be and in, into the fall and they'll definitely be running when I'm teaching there. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, if you're interested in hiking or biking, um, you, you can just hop on those buses and they are they are fantastic. And I know that my husband comes along and um, he runs on the carriage roads uh, and uh, he tours, he goes to all, you know, we have our car, so he goes to all the small uh, towns um, and pokes around in all the towns and goes to the museums. But mainly what he really likes to do is hike uh, in the park. So if you're an outdoorsy person, there is plenty to do there. Um, besides, uh, you know, you can always uh, eat lobster rolls every day. So <laughs> can you think of other things to do? I mean, there are boat trips. There are just yeah, there's whale things. watching. There's a yeah. nature cruise that leaves right off of uh, the pier, right at our accommodations. Uh, daily boat trips leaving there. Um, yep, there's plenty of places to rent bikes. Um, or if you're local, bring a bike. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think both locations, Tucson and Bar Harbor, are fabulous. Actually, all of our locations, the reason that we pick those locations that we go to is so that people can travel with their loved ones or with friends and maybe not have to take workshops together or take workshops together. So there's always something to do if you're traveling with a spouse. Yeah, yeah. And, and many people do. Many yeah. people do. Yeah. 
Thank you. Sherry, I've got um, David is asking, how do you know when to stop before overworking a piece? Um, well, sometimes it's as simple as you're holding your brush and I don't know where to put it, meaning that there's just like, okay, Ooh. I'm done. Sometimes, <laughs> and this has happened to me when I painted on location, someone will come along who's a painter and they'll say, you're done, right? And I said, no, I just want to work on, no, no, you're done. So I've been told that too. Um, but, uh, you know, because I worked kind of up from light to dark, like in this case, I would probably do, you know, one layer of sky and then water and the light part of the, of the, uh, of the rocks and then do the second layer, the darker, the darker value, and then do the details. And once I'm done the details, I think it's a matter of practice, but, um, I've overworked plenty too. So it's also, um, you know, just like just knowing because you've done it so many times that you're about to uh, go over into the dark side of, of painting too much. And it's just a matter of practice. I find that hard to believe that you you've overworked paintings before. I don't, I don't, I don't believe you for a second there, Sherry. There's, <laughs> you should look at the, my recycling like, bin of torn up paintings, one of which is sitting right here now. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Sherry, Man. someone's that um, also, and I want to get, we, we, we're almost running out of time, but I want to ask some, some questions that I have for you. Um, sure. I think we've covered everything that everyone asked other than the, the, how many, what, what kind of supplies do they need to bring? Like how much is that really located in the materials list that you have on the website? Is that, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I bring a sketchbook. This is, this is my latest sketchbook. So I bring a fairly large A4 size, but it doesn't have to be this big a small watercolor kit, a pen, a pencil, a water container. We all bring too much, but that is the basic uh, kit that I bring. And if you have about 12 colors, uh, you are you will be fine for either of these locations. You don't need special colors, special equipment. You just need one good brush and uh, a pen and a pencil and a nice, and uh, the, the, you know, where you have to spend the money is the good quality sketchbook. That's what I believe. You can have cheap paint, but you have to have good paper. Yes, thank you. Okay, so here's the, where the fun begins. I know everyone's on their edge of their seats, but I have a couple of questions that I haven't shared uh, with Sherry um, that I'm gonna ask her, if that's okay with you, Sherry, putting you in the hot sure. spot. Sure. Um, and it's just sort of getting to know Sherry. I feel like I know you so well. I know your family. I know your husband. You know, it's wonderful. But this is for people to be able to find out some things about Sherry that we might not actually know yet. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to start. Um, all right. What is one quirky tool or supplies or supply that you always have in your sketching kit? Um, even if it's like, it doesn't have to be like a tool that's necessary, but like, what's something that you bring with you, um, that we don't, that we would like to know about that we, we, we might not uh, know. Sure. Uh, well, one thing that I have in, in my kit is not a drawing tool. It's actually like a rescue tool. Um, <laughs> I carry this tiny little roll of washi tape, which is Japanese tape that maybe, uh, scrapbookers know. And it's basically a fantastic tape because, um, it's not very sticky. So if you mess up something and you it's too dark like if I wanted one of those rock ledges that's in that sketch that's up on on screen now and is too dark I can surround it with washi tape and then just take a little um, eradicator brush or stiff brush and and uh, fix it and rescue it or if I want to get a few of the waves in there so it's a funny little roll of tape but um, it's uh, it also helps rescuing student work sometimes. <laughs> You heard it here. Sherry Blaukoff, washi yeah, tape. Yeah, washi tape. <laughs> That's amazing. Everyone's going to be showing up with washi tape from now on, Sherry. Yeah, just exactly. Okay, here's another one. Do you have a funny or unusual habit when you're sketching on location? Like, I mean, do you have a lucky hat or a favorite snack? I feel like I could answer this one. Uh, <laughs> you want to answer for me, Annie? Well, sort of. I'll tell you. I mean, I'll tell you what I have. It's not a lucky snack because when I'm sketching, I forget to eat, um, as my husband will tell you. But I have a lucky car. A um, lucky what? A lucky car. Car. Oh, a lucky car. Yeah, I'm tell this me about car, it. which is now really rusty and 15, 15 or sixteen years old, was my dad's car, and I inherited it oh. from him. And it's sort of like an old man's car. It's very. Um, it's very 
comfortable inside. And that is my sketching car. And um, it, it's, a, it's an old Volkswagen Passat. And he just, you know, he bought nice leather seats. So it's just, it, it, it reminds me sort of of Archie Bunker's chair that's now in the uh, Smithsonian. Um, you know, he sat in his chair all the time. That right. is my sketching chair. And if I could take like the steering wheel, like I, I have to get rid of the car one of these days when it rusts out too bad. Um, and my, my husband keeps saying, can't we sell that car? And I keep saying, no, we can't sell that car because that's my sketching car. You know what I love about that story even more than lucky cars that how many times do you post on Instagram of a picture that you've done in the middle of winter while you're sitting in the car? Yeah, and now car. we all know that you're sitting in your lucky car. Yeah, that's incredible. Thank you for sharing that with us. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's so wonderful. Oh, Sherry, maybe is it possible or too much to ask if we could get a sketch of this car? Oh, I've never sketched the car. Okay, I will sketch the car. Okay, everyone. Deborah Taylor, you heard it. She is going to sketch her lucky car. I'm so thrilled. Okay, one other question and then I will let you go. Sherry, this has been so much fun. Thank you again. Um, mm. Here's one thing. Okay, so let's see. My last question of all, um, of all the places you've sketched, which one do you think about the most looking back? And is there a spot that holds a special memory for you? That, that could be a pretty big general question. So you well, can Well, I'll, I'll just say that, um, you know, I've been very lucky in my sketching career and also th through Urban Sketchers, I've been very lucky to to, uh, to teach at different symposia around the world. And um, I, I, I never take that for granted that I got to go to Singapore to teach at a symposium. And after Singapore, a bunch of us went to uh, Cambodia we went to see him reap and we went to the temples and we sketched there. And um, just that whole experience was really unbelievable. But the memory that I have that stands out most for me is just sitting in a cafe and we were um, sitting uh, across from the market. And I had never seen anything like this before of, of you know, women uh, squatting down um, on you know, either just squatting or sitting on tiny little stools and having all these bowls of raw chicken and um, uh, dried fish and all these vegetables that I didn't know. And I was able to sketch that scene and I will never forget that. And an artist came along, a local artist, and he started, he was looking at my drawings and I was looking at his drawings and he was, you know, trying to sell uh, some of his ink drawings. And it was just such a fantastic experience. I mean, I, I will never forget that. I was, I, I was like, I couldn't, I could, can't believe I'm in Cambodia um, sketching in this market in Siem Reap. And that's living in the moment, Cherry. And that's probably, you know, that's, that's the love of and the joy of urban sketching is these opportunities and experiences um, yeah. that you get. And it's, you know, for yeah, me, when you're... All, it, it, you are so grateful for all these places that you have been taken to through urban sketching and through your art. Um, and it, it comes out very clearly how grateful you are um, about these experiences. So um, yeah, and it's, it's really lovely to hear. And that's, I think, the, you know, the last thing that I want to share with people is that, you know, it's not so much about having the great sketch right? It's not so much about the result, but it's a lot about the experience, about being in the moment of, of um, you know, of sitting in a place, talking to people, uh, the smells, the sounds, uh, writing in your sketchbook about a conversation that you heard. Um, it's the process that I enjoy the most. And because I like people and I like to get to know people. And I think also people really appreciate when you are appreciating their place. So I think one of the things that I try to share uh, with students is just to um, the joy of the experience of wherever you are and giving them the confidence to bring their sketchbooks when they travel on their own with their families on a cruise, on a bus trip, or even to go to a local market is just not to be afraid to just sketch because it's the process that's wonderful. Yeah, and you do a wonderful job of that. I've watched you with your Thank students you. um, and it's 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 really rewarding and, and rewarding for the students as well. So again, I can't say more enough 
about um, these in-person workshops with Sherry. Um, I know, Sherry, you go on a lot of these workshops with a lot of people, but I, I will say that I've enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed having you with us, joining us, Madeline Island School of the Arts. Um, we love having you, um, and it's such a pleasure to see how rewarding it is for the students at the end of the week. They don't want to leave. Um, so thank you. I, I appreciate for everything that you've done. And before I let you go, I just want you to answer a question about pens. Can sure. you tell me what kind of pens you use? Sure. And then I, I officially I a, answered everyone's question. Sure. I, I use a platinum carbon desk pen. I don't have it right in front of me, but um, I'll type it in the messages. Cheap. A platinum oh, carbon desk platinum pen. Platinum carbon desk pen. And I, I get carbon ink cartridges. And one warning, if you buy the pen, because you can buy it anywhere, you can buy it on Amazon or from Goulet or Jet Pen, it comes with a cartridge that is not waterproof. So either be be aware of that or don't use that cartridge. Just buy platinum ink cartridges and they will be waterproof. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate sure. that. And for everyone else that has joined us, all of you that have joined us this morning, this afternoon, this evening, or whatever time it is that you have come to us from, um, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts at Madeline Island School of the Arts. We're so thankful that you took the time to join Sherry and I today to go over her fabulous sketchbook and go through. I don't even think we saw everything. Did we, Sherry? No, I think we ran out of time. But I know okay. we ran out of time, but that's okay. Come and sketch um, with you me. Know, we'll certainly, you know, we'll do this again. And, and maybe you'll just have to join us on one of these workshops and Sherry will go through the book with you in person. Um, I just want to say thank you to you, Sherry, for taking the time joining us today. Um, it was wonderful seeing you. Um, in your own home. I usually see you outside of your home. So in your new studio, which is gorgeous and beautiful and all your used watercolor books that you have behind you. Um, so thank you for sharing it with us and sharing your time with us. Um, we look thank forward you, to seeing Amy. you soon. Again, I'm not going to remember them off the top of my head, but you're going to be in Tucson uh, with us in um, January 20th and then the second week will be January 27th for the week and then again in September you'll be with us the 29th of September to October 3rd for that week in Bar Harbor. Beautiful time. It's not too cold. Everything's open in Bar Harbor. So join us then and Sherry until we meet again. Have a wonderful day and thanks again for everyone for joining us and thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you Annie and thanks for everyone. It was so great to see everybody's names popping up. So